Okay. All right. This is a late start to the Saturday, July 9th uh, council work session. We got a bit of a late start due to some technical difficulties, uh, but we are going now. In attendance, we have council persons Koss, Camera, Bruger, McNamara, Shresta, and myself, Council President Brian Wolf. We also have in attendance uh, village planner Eric Fisher, village attorney Jesse Champ, uh, and uh, Leah is uh, kind enough to be operating village conference room for us this morning. So uh, let us get started. Um, before we go into the council packet, I wanted to ask, we had tabled the right-of-way vacation uh, vacatings uh, for additional research regarding the way that those were drawn. Do we have an update on that? We need to get something back from the um, surveyor, which I don't have at this time, so it can stay tabled. Yep, I was just looking to see if there was an update, so we are still waiting for that additional information. So, so here, I'll throw this one out there. Um, well, no, I guess we should probably wait for that. I was going to say, I know that before we had decided to table it, the, the general consensus was simply to vote it down. The, that was our straw poll. But I guess it would be unfair to bring it to a vote in a condition that one could not approve it because that is disingenuous. So never mind. My good idea just died. I think we yes, should... Councilperson Brueger. Uh, speaking of ideas, just so we can say we covered it and then move on. And Jesse, I'll have your opinion on this if possible, because we didn't have a member of the community asking why we were still doing this virtually. Um, so I pulled up some quick facts, and it looks like Ohio reside, revised code 121.22 says the open meetings act requires public bodies in Ohio to conduct all public business and open meetings that the public may attend and observe. This means that the public body is meaning to discuss and vote on or otherwise to decide public business. This meeting must be open to the public. Since we don't vote or decide anything in these, is that why we can do them virtually? Yes, and I did, I'm glad you brought this up. I noticed I was perusing our packet and I think it's just something, maybe a typo we need to fix from the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, it said that uh, virtual meetings are allowed through June 20th. They were actually allowed through July 1st. So whatever action we took on the June 23rd meeting was valid. Uh, mm -hmm. And yes, uh, we can do the work sessions virtually because no decisions are being made. And we'll essentially reiterate any discussion we have here at the public meetings. Okay. Just wanted to get that on the record and et cetera. You know, blah, done. Cool. Thank you, Council Person Brueger. Then the other item I had that was off packet was I got an email uh, from uh, Leah, I think it was, about... Yep. Uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I apologize, too. I am um, fighting COVID, so... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> um, I just had... Um, we are planning national night out this year um it's on august 2nd <clears throat> tuesday august 2nd from 5 30 to 7 30 behind hawthorne um like always and um this year we just um we would like to um add some things to make it a little bit better and although we wouldn't need an appropriation, we would like to spend funds that we already have. But since we haven't spent funds on this before, we just wanted to make sure council was okay with that and aware. Um, and I, I talked to Jesse about it. <clears throat> he said that a, um, a motion to approve um, would be perfectly fine for that. And oh, good. Okay. Um, this was a list of the expenses that we had so far. Um, and that means adding um, portable restrooms. We have never had that in the past. Um, and it's just one, um, one ADA restroom and one standard. Um, 
So things like that, we would love to have a face painter. Um, so it's just some expenses that we've never had in the past. We just wanted to make sure you all were, were okay with that. <clears throat> um, I, my only question in it was the uh, meal tickets for first responders. Um, since we've not, I mean, I guess in the, in the past we've done like burgers at some of these. So I guess I, but the, what we have coming are food trucks to, to just vend their, their deal. Is that the thing? So we're, we're sort of swapping the burgers we would have cooked for the community for food truck meals for 20 first responders. Is that the idea? Correct. Yes. There will be about six food trucks, I think there. Um, and we would like to, um, at least pay for dinner for some of the first responder guests. Mm -hmm. um, not, not Minerva Park employees, but um, the outsiders, the, the guests from other jurisdictions that come in, um, like Columbus Fire or um, Franklin County Sheriff's Office, things like that. So if Columbus Fire brings one of their big trucks to set up for kids to play on, we'll give the staff who comes free dinner if yeah, correct. Franklin County dive team or whatever. Yes. I know those are some of the ones that regularly come out. That was our thought. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I have no problem with that. Does, does anybody have any concerns or anything they want to say on the matter? All right, then it'll be my intention. I'll, I'll raise a motion to approve this. Um, Leah, if you could take a note and have Barb add it to the agenda. Absolutely. Thank you. That way, if it's on the agenda, I for sure Zs won't forget. But if it's not on the agenda, I'm only giving you a 60-40 chance of me remembering. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 I don't know if it would be appropriate, but you could probably just slide it in under legislation, under the list yeah. of things with that, okay. even though it's not, you know, an ordinance you, or anything. You could also, uh, the other place to put it would be under new business. Right. Oh, you could just yeah, you could point. pre pre slot that as new business. Yeah, that'd be a, that'd be even better. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody have anything else they wanted to jump into before we started going through the packet? Mark, you you shout you 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 got yourself ringed in yellow like you were trying to say something. Oh, I, I might have just been breathing heavy i don't know uh, i have a sensitive but very directional but very sensitive microphone <laughs> uh sorry i inappropriate jokes that that come to mind all right let me get the packet shared on my screen and we will we will uh get started here hold on i don't have my usual like four monitor setup so it's a little a little less wieldly. Share screen. I don't know how you can work with four monitors. I'd get too distracted. I uh, I don't know how to do it with less than four monitors anymore. Uh, actually, that's a lie. I use three, but four would be even better. Okay, to the agenda. Um, uh, who do we got here? We got uh, first up, uh, Jesse. Any anything in your um, legal counsel report that you want to give us a heads up on? Uh, the only thing is I am still waiting to hear back. I tried to uh, get a hold of Department of Commerce again yesterday. Uh, I'm sort of working through some state government employees that I knew from my previous job uh, about the uh, DORA and some creative ways that we can, we can make that happen. I'm just not there yet. I just need to have a conversation with somebody over there about the type of entities that can hold liquor licenses, and then I'll have a better grasp on what we can and can't do okay we look forward to it Absolutely. then uh eric uh fisher anything you want to give us a heads up on regarding um your village planning or uh i don't know anything else in that space sure sir um morning all the quick and dirty is uh as we mentioned the other week we we're going to be going out to bid for a short period two weeks this week and bring you back what we got. And I think we'll be there on third time here. So fingers crossed. And then the only other item, let's see. Oh, 
uh, you should see the Mason out there getting started on the repair work for the amphitheater this week. So we're going to corn door in that area off so he doesn't get overly abused by some of our curious adult residents. Um, <laughs> we just ask for the public, if you're listening in, please let him do his work. Um, don't supervise him. He's really good at what he does. So that's where we're at. There you go. Sounds good to me. Was there... Uh, all right, that's good. Uh, anything from planning and zoning? I know we put out a call for a new non-voting member. Uh, anything else that we want to call out for planning and zoning there? I think that this next meeting, we're just going to be, we're going to go through the next stage of the code, right, Jesse? Yeah. Okay. And I think that's the main thing on our agenda. I don't, I don't have anything on the new member. So. Okay. Uh, council person stressed anything to give us a heads up on regarding MPCA. Yeah, um, so they've started their monthly emailers um, and Monday we are meeting um, to um, start their swag stuff so they can start having merchandise up on, the, on their store website. Um, Family Fun Night, Saturday, July 16th um, and Northland Unit, uh, Unity Festival, September 17th. So Pride was awesome, um, MPCA reps. Lisa Brueger and Bob Gale was out at the, you know, NCC for the July parade. So we appreciate all they do. Cool, cool, cool. Then rolling right in for your communications report. Anything you wish to hedge up on there? Um, just like coffee with council was great. I do think there's a few things that, you know, we got to do, you know, adopt a time limit. I'm going to be making a meeting for that. Um, next one's going to be in September. I'm trying to, you know, visualize what it, what it's going to look like with assigning topics. So we have set topics to talk about um, our email. You know, we were looking into um, Unicode. It's just, I don't think it's worth the money. I, I don't for what we can do a lot cheaper. Um, so we're looking at a couple other options. Um, we just, we're doing that soon. We just said after the 4th of July. So um, yeah. That, that's it. And we'll help, you know, the village with communications for National Night Out any way we can. So that's mine. Um, all right. Finance committee uh, hasn't met since the last meeting. Uh, next big deal will be the uh, uh, the public hearing for the tax budget, which is immediately before this council meeting that we are prepping for. Uh, and I'm sure we will find other things to busy ourselves with shortly thereafter. Uh, council person costs. What do you what do you want to give us a heads up on regarding streets? Um, regarding streets, we're we're going to talk about um, the visibility of. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my cat. Hello. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to talk about the visibility of numbers from the street because there were concerns about um, police being able to see them. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that. Um, I've gotten an email about concerns about the um, a couple pothole situation so the engineer is aware of that we're going to try and schedule a meeting probably this week um, based on everybody's availability to talk about that as well the east shore project is coming along so once that's kind of a little bit um more complete we can talk about that and then the jordan road project we got um an official proposal so we're going to talk about um how we can fix um that a little bit and how to go forward so that's all planned for the next meeting for us sounds like you're busy that's yep. cool. Super All right. <laughs> Councilperson camera, community. Yeah, so <clears throat> I think you've all seen that uh, the doors have been placed on the concession stand. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of uh, evenings and weekend work on that. Um, the fridge came in that we ordered. Um, we're still working on getting the electrical um, done. Um, we're running into some issues there, but to try to get those vending machines moved outside so that they're accessible. Um, <clears throat> John actually um, suggested and, and we agreed that uh, if he wants to open the concession stand during the week, he is able to do that using the lifeguards. Mm -hmm. um, so he's been doing that during the week. <clears throat> um, so we're starting to see a lot more sales because of that. Um, so that's it's, word on the street is everyone's happy about it. Um, they definitely would like some hot food. Uh, I do try to explain to them why we can't do hot food uh, because we don't have that uh, license that we need. But um, we could uh, we could look at like um, my like uh, 
things that are microwavable though, right? Like we could sell a frozen something and have a microwave available for people to heat microwave it in. I, I think that might be acceptable as long as we're not cooking it. Right. Um, so that so that might be a workaround or a, a possible thing. Not that microwave hot food is great, but it's it's better than not. No, I agree. Uh, but we it's not us handling any hot food or preparing right. it. No. Exactly. So we'll we'll look into that. Um, um, we uh, are gonna it will come up on Thursday, but we do need to appropriate a little bit more money for the snacks now that um, we've kind of sold through what we appropriated. But this is all the uh, you know we're not losing any money here. It's just us uh, um, making sure we have enough to keep it stocked uh, to sell through. So. Are okay. things just not priced enough for it to be self-sustaining or what's going on with that? No, we just only had between um, the swag and the uh, hot dogs and hamburgers and the concessions, we, we just didn't put enough money aside for that to okay. last the entire summer, especially now that we're open on weekdays. So It may, it may also be, and I, I don't know the financing on this entirely, but it may also be that the revenue comes in and goes into a fund and then we have to appropriate it back out of that fund to use right. for this purpose. Right. That's what I suspect is going on here. Right. That yeah. would that would make a lot of sense to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We ordered the chairs for the pool, so mm -hmm. we have uh, forty. I think it's forty six of them is what we could get with the money we approved. Um, unfortunately, they will not be in for pool season. Um, you know we're supply chain issues and whatnot still have us backed out. Uh, we'll probably receive them sometime in November, uh, but we will have them for the start of the pool season next year, uh, which will be really nice to have some new chairs out there. And hopefully next year we can add to that as well. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then um, at, uh, I was asked to bring up about if we want to close memberships to the pool. Um, uh, I think in the past they've done that. They kind of capped it off and then just sold um, single day memberships or the guest pass pack. Um, and so, you know, it's just something to discuss at some point. I mean, so setting a, are you talking about as a policy setting a limit to the number or just making an announcement saying we at this point will no longer send mem sell memberships Correct. Have a nice day. I've, I've heard a couple of things. I've heard that in the past um, they've prorated them depending on how many months. So if it's a three month season then um, you know, and there's only two months left then they've sold it at two thirds the price. Uh, I don't know if that was ever voted on, you know, cause I feel yeah. like it's something that would have to be voted on, but uh, I just want to make sure we're doing I... the right thing. So. I don't remember ever taking either of those actions in the past, making, having some sort of resolution or motion to change that we were selling them. I mean, I can't yeah. recall that ever happening either. Okay. Yeah. Um, or, or having any policy or any direction from council regarding prorating memberships. So, I mean, I, I'm fine with that. We should probably, if that is in fact the thing we want to do, we should look at next year when we are doing memberships, just including that into the language, right, with a monthly proration and just bake that right into it. Um, I honestly don't know that it's worth it, right? If at this yeah. point somebody wants a membership, they're welcome to buy a membership and memberships cost this much. Right, exactly. That's that's kind of my feeling too, but I did I did want to bring it up since uh, John had said something about it. So mm. yeah, that's my thought too. You know, if you move sure. from the neighborhood, you know, we don't give you a refund on the months that you weren't, you didn't <laughs> live here. So why right. would we do it in reverse? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, I guess it does make it a little more enticing, right? Someone is in mid July and realizing, man, this has been a beautiful summer. What's mm -hmm. the best? What's the mo most affordable way I can actually make use of the pool? Mm -hmm. I, I don't hate the idea. I just, you know, I feel like that there's a lot of discussion that we would want to have to make sure we're doing it right. Right. Okay. Uh, all Maybe, right. Do we want to cap anything? Anyone, any thoughts on that? 
I think just let him go. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay. okay. Uh, all right, Councilperson McNamara, what do you got to tell us about safety? Well, uh, first off, my apologies. I must have had a dodgy connection there for a moment. I tossed out. Um, but here we are. Um, so safety last met in um, mid-June, and we discussed mainly um, logistical, um, not issues, but, you know, questions or requests from the police department, most of which turned out to already be in progress, or, you know, most of which already turned out to be occurring or being looked into by police administration. Um, the few that weren't, I don't want to misquote, but I believe there was being look into a standard issue flashlight and um, looking into the possible uh, restarting of or establishment of a bike patrol as we apparently do have the equipment and just not hadn't been doing it. So um, at my next uh, meet up with the chief, I will figure out um, you know, where we stand on the questions asked. But uh, as of right now, I don't have a meeting planned. Um, I do think that we should consider the, um, you know, the street numbers and the email that was discussed with everybody. Um, if it'd be possible to maybe uh, contract out for like um, stenciling it in on like a uniform part of the driveway like uh you know the bottom left or bottom right or you know wherever and consider factoring that into the next um you know big uh street budget to have um or you know the next big street project to have those addresses you know um installed or you know um, curbs put in where possible to have those um numbers painted in so um so we already have in place i believe and i'd have to go back and double check or maybe jesse or eric will know but i believe we already have a code on the books regarding what and how street numbers need to be displayed <clears throat> right correct um, those are we did that under the maintenance code, especially when we adopted it. I'll send around uh, just so everyone's on the same. I'll pull yeah. that little slivet and uh, snip it and send it around to everybody. I mean, immediate difficulties that I see about, you know, the suggestion of just going and slapping it on everybody's driveway is that not every driveway in the village has a curb, right? Putting in That's curbs. True, yes. Putting in Again, curbs. Yeah, just, just amusing. Yeah, not, it's expensive. A, not funny, but a music. Yeah, I understand. Um, but I, you know, and I think that, yeah, I, I think we can revisit what that code is and enhance it if we see enhancement as possible. Uh, and we can, you know, get the administration or request the administration have our code enforcement officer cite more people. I mean, I, I, I suspect my own house is probably in violation right now because I have bushes that have grown through the season and are obscuring my, I believe they are probably obscuring my, my house number. So, nope. I mean, that was on, on my personal chore list when I get home. Yeah, and if I may, just to quickly add, um, the new subdivision is covered on that. There are the mailboxes as well as the house numbers mm -hmm. on the house itself. So you can clear that one. Uh, and John has been, our code enforcement officer has been, you know, where necessary going around and talking to people and, you know, in extreme cases, issuing out some letters to get people where they have no notices, um, you know, because it is a it is a safety issue. So we'll mm -hmm. try to keep on it. But there are some challenges in the older village to be consistent. I think putting them on the mailbox post, we talked about it in house the other day is probably the most consistent way in some form. And, and quite frankly, the cheapest, uh, because we are lacking of curves. And some of the houses are set far back that a number on the house doesn't necessarily help either. But so I'll send around the I'll, code. I'll throw in a, a sticky wicket on that for, for, your, for your considerations or musings, as Councilperson McNamara likes to say, uh, my mailbox is not in contiguous order. 
right? So my mailbox is numerically out of order with Lakewood Drive because it's around the corner. Understood. So yeah, so there, and I don't know if I'm the only one like that in the village, but there might be others. And so probably on those also, four lots, Brian, like that, we would have to go ahead and just put a post on the other side with your number. So that, so uh, the, you know what I'm saying? Just, just out there in the right of way, a simple, you know, a simple, and, and I would say we would choose something that's nicely colored, not just a, a stake in the ground with your number right. on it, something that's aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. It would make sense in those in these rare cases where they do where either the number changes over because our officers of course know our our setup for the most part that have some experience but fire columbus fire guys are the ones sure. that you know in emergency response that need that extra help and quick action yep no i i get it and i think when when you have those ideas or when we have those ideas we should talk them through one more one more again just to make sure we're all on the same page Thank All right, you for any... bringing that up. That I hadn't considered that, but yeah, there I we do have some twisty, turny bits that could throw a complication in the stenciling or whatever. I am, I am full of complications. It's my middle name, Brian Complication Wolf. All right, uh, Councilperson Brueger, anything to fill us in on on legislation? Um, well, the big thing coming up this Thursday is the tax budget. We'll, of course, be having the public meeting uh, 6.30 before council to discuss and uh, show that to the public before doing our third reading. Uh, other than that, still looking for poop suggestions, still looking for lease suggestions. Our next meeting is the 20, whatever it, 4th, 8th, I can't remember, I just wrote it in my calendar. Uh, whatever that Thursday is, looks like the 28th. Um, the one thing I was going to just circle back to with Nikki, um, who mentioned family fun night is this Saturday. Um, I'm not sure who exactly you directly chat with on, uh, Minerva Park Community Association, but I did look at their website the other night and although they have it listed on their calendar, they don't even have the times. It's just that Saturday family fun night doesn't they don't have any description or header or banner. So you might want to reach out to whoever it is, runs their website, I don't know who that is, and say, hey, you might want to, I don't know how many people use or know about their website, but putting information on right like, Yeah, might get people, because yeah, right now it, it, there's, if you were looking for details on it, their website wouldn't be helping you out, I guess is what I'm saying. And I'm not- Deal, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Yep. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't have anything new for legislation. All right. Well, um, and the only legislation in the packet for us to discuss is uh, the, the, tax budget. the tax budget. Does anybody have any questions on that or concerns regarding that? Yes, Councilperson Trust, I see your hand okay, raised. Okay, so before we get into that, when when Councilperson Berger said that, you know, we're just waiting on, on anything on the leash laws and the poop law. What, what exactly do we need? What is, what is our next step? I know that we were on the, the, I don't want to call it the poop law, but on that stuff, we were waiting. We, the last update was Eric Fisher kind of had presented something and we were going into kind of these hypotheticals. So, so there was some revisions being done. Uh, Maybe he can update us on that and what is needed, you know, sure. what is needed to move this to the next step. So, so all, all the staff needs is myself and Jess just need to, from our last discussion, just go ahead and get a ordinance onto the books, which we can probably produce, you know, with the holiday and then with some of our other priorities, this did not get done as quickly as we would like it. But I'm thinking the next couple of days, meaning Monday through Wednesday, we can have something thrown together for a first reading, you know, to add to the agenda before the start of the reading for uh, <clears throat> for Thursday evening. Um, and that will at least cover your the issue with the fecal matter and the, the people picking up after the animals. So that's that's number one. Um, leashes, I think, are a bit more of a discussion with council. Perhaps you want to do it here because I think they're the primary issue is we, we either leave our. I think the opinion of staff, including the chief, is that right now we, you know, I don't want to speak for me, I'd ask him Thursday, but from internal discussions, I think we're fine with the way the law reads right now. I think the main question of policy for council is 
do you want to, if I recall correctly, if do you want to have leashes for all dogs re required, or do you want to have also the language that stays for under reasonable control, right? I think those are the two issues from a council policy setting decision, and we can change the ordinance as needed. That's where the direction is called for. But it's under reasonable control at now, correct? That, that's where we're at now. The, the, the way the law leads now, reads now is we're, we're from a police enforcement standpoint, we're fine with it. It's a matter of policy for the village. Correct. Okay. All right. So does anybody want to discuss that? I mean, and I, I, having reviewed, reviewed what we currently have, I believe that what we have on the books is sufficient. That's my own personal belief. Well, I mean, I don't think that we're having a, a large amount of dog attacks in the village. So I don't, <laughs> I don't want to come across and say that. I just, I think it is just a preventative measure. Um, and that's my personal opinion. You know, not only does it save other dogs and keep other people safe, it keeps our children safe. A lot of the times it's right around the park. Um, and then let's not leave out our wildlife. You know, one of the number one issues with wildlife injuries are roaming dogs. And on top of that, I really think that on that measure, we need to revisit the dogs that are getting out repeatedly. It's becoming quite a problem. Uh, most times it's the same dog, you know, you know, neighbors don't mind helping and, and containing your animal and, and, you know, not calling the shelter, you know, people are kind enough to do that because we're just an amazing village. However, if your dog is constantly getting out, it's not the dog's fault, it's the owner's fault. So, uh, so again, I think that's something that we definitely yeah. need to revise. Um, so Nikki, can I ask you a question? Under, under current code, can, just so yeah, we're can clear. I, yeah, can I ask you a question, Nikki? Do you believe sure. that a dog who is getting out is under reasonable control? Not at all. Okay, then that dog is already, that, that situation is already in violation of our current code. But in that current code, it also says if that dog is let out three times, he is marked dangerous. Again, yeah, that so is- Yeah, so that's, then that's the key. That's the key. I think that from a staff review, I apologize. That from a staff review, that, that dangerous language goes back to when if I remember correctly, a lot of ordinances and villages had this regarding pit bulls and dangerous creatures and stuff. And so mm -hmm. some of that language, in my view, from experience is not enforceable. And I'll go over that with with Jesse. Uh, and we can obviously during a code rewrite, uh, just just get rid of it. But some of it may not be enforceable as it stands. Yeah, some way just figure that around. Because again, uh, in all due respect, there, there's no need to just speak of one breed. I've seen chihuahuas that'll bite your toes off. And I mean that with all, you know, all due respect. Um, but again, there, we got to do something. And I don't think it's fair for these dogs to be deemed dangerous because according to our code is one thing. But when a warden or a shelter or a rescue see that, that rescue, you know, that that carries along with that canine and and that can be disastrous if one of these dogs got out and was you know held at the shelter and it had that rescue again it's tied to the microchip number you know when that happens that can mean an automatic euthanasia you okay. know and so just we got to reword that i think it, okay well for, for us it doesn't so I, I, let me be frank it doesn't matter what our code says in that regard the humane society has its own authority in, mm -hmm. in dealing with with animals right they have their own officers who are armed to deal with purely animal situations and they have a process and policy that is beyond our authority and control and I just want to make that clear I was going to suggest that really it doesn't really matter what our language says they there are laws that dictate how they proceed and handle themselves and Jesse uh, just correct me if I'm speaking out of turn but that's been my experience uh, with the Humane Society I mean that that is true I have never looked into what would if they were deemed dangerous under all our code, if that when a dog is deemed dangerous, the Humane Society and the FCBS will definitely take that into conjunction with how that dog is housed, how it is quarantined, and yes, lastly, their own how it's terminated. Yeah, so I'd like to get some clarification on that point too. That would be super appreciated. Yeah, our our laws will not change how they handle themselves. They're they are under a different governmental authority. So I just want to be clear about that. Correct, but. Again, if we're putting a term out, I mean, we got to be careful, you know, because it's not the dog's fault. It's, it's an owner that can't keep their dog out. If you know there's a hole in your fence, 
you're the dangerous one. You know what I mean? And I mean that. Just Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not dictating anyone lets an animal get out as being dangerous. I just want to be clear. Our code may say a certain thing. It may not be applicable. Jesse and I will discuss that. We'll take it out sooner if needed, but I, I don't believe that that language is in, it cannot, can be, I believe there's some case law, and Jesse and I'll talk about it, that has kind of made that a moot issue. Okay, so, so for the takeaway here, we can, we should, we should parse out anything that is unenforceable from the existing code, yes. and then we can review it again at that point in time to make certain that it does in fact do everything that we want this code to do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm, this might just be my, my heartlessness, but in my opinion, uh, the, you know, if a dog gets marked as dangerous and that is a ne negative effect for that animal, that to me sounds like the encouragement to that homeowner to not let their dog get out. Like if they really yeah, don't want their is, dog to be branded, you know, to have to wear the scarlet D of dangerous. Yeah, then, well, that's definitely heartlessness because it's not the dog's yeah. fault, well, you know? You know, I am not going to say I'm not heartless. I, no. I certainly am, That's but the but right. the only person the only person we can control in the situation is the owner. And Correct. If, the, if the owner's motivations are such that they don't care if their dog is deemed dangerous, I'm not certain I should either. But that's that that may be a different conversation. Uh, does anybody else have anything they want to say regarding a potential rewrite of the leash laws? I just want to be on the record to say that I do care about dangerous dogs and roaming i, I yeah. mean apparently daria does too <laughs> right <laughs> okay uh, you know I, it's not that i don't care that dogs are getting out it's that whether they are marked dangerous or not that sounds like a concern for the the dog owner yeah right i i my, my empathies lie with the community and anything we can do to protect the community <laughs> is is yeah. where where my concerns lie not with necessarily that specific animal yeah, I agree with that. I just, I mean, I'm a little concerned about the under reasonable control thing. Yeah. Very true. All right. Okay. Anybody else have anything that you want to add to that subject? No, but I would honestly like to start utilizing maybe communication wise polls, public polls, and just to get other residents take takes. And, and I think we need to really look at those and, and listen to what our residents are saying. You know, the last post that was about this leash, you know, I would say there was all of them in support of it. So again, I know we're here and, and we're, we're doing what's, you know, again, what's best and, and best of the interest of the residents. But I also think we have a due diligence to listen to them. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of the time that the that's probably why they feel like their voice isn't important. And I, I, I just want to get a feel for that. I really do. I, and I have been looking on ways to do public polls that way, you know, they have a way to, to talk about issues like this um, because, because their opinion should be taken into consideration, you know, instead of just six people sitting behind a table, you know? So I just, I want to keep that in mind. And I think I will start utilizing that just so you guys know. So any, um, I would say that any polling that we would take action on would need to be um, of, of an appropriate, how do I want to, statistical significance and developed through appropriate rigor. Yep, methodologies right? and how you yeah. collect your samples, absolutely. And, because, and, because and, and otherwise, can I get a write-up of, write of how that's done and, and professionally and effectively yes. so I can get started on that? Because yeah. that is something I am determined to do. I, I, I say, Nikki, don't take this the wrong way, but I, I think I'm going to send you yeah, whatever's out sorry. there. We've been doing we've been doing a lot of. I personally have been. My background was working with Ohio State University, doing a lot of census labor data polling. Um, we did work for the census, and so I helped spearhead your first um, internet um, poll. Essentially, it's your first. Um, instrument that we use to call the questionnaire uh, some years ago. We do need to do that again. We've had some discussions. We've obviously had a lot on our plate, uh, but this mm -hmm. is not, you know, it's on the priority list, but there's a way to do it that essentially you, you set out your sample, you control how many times people answer for what you're doing. And that way it ensures that you don't have, you know, like your standard internet stuff where a ton of people, you know, a minority 
dominate the and skew the results, which is what you don't want to do. You want to have something that is properly created and handled. And so there's there's a way to do that. And I'll well, so should we just include this in our survey that we're planning on doing, Mr. Fisher? I would yes. We need to sit and discuss that here at some point. And I think once we get the building started, I think there'll be time yeah. to dedicate to you know in between stuff to to, to do that. I appreciate that clarification, sir. All right, moving on along to old business. Anybody have any old business they want to bring up? Fireworks. Oh, yeah, well, fireworks. Yeah, uh, I mean, 4th of July came and went. I guess uh, I guess we already have some ordinance on the books, according to, uh, according to police. So... Do we need do we need something new is the question you're if i may i talked to chief about this before the fireworks and i was out there mm -hmm. obviously the evening of did mostly ground stuff in my location but somebody over on <laughs> green line uh, and over in um, sycamore had a very nice display i was envious um <laughs> but generally if i found that most people were done by uh 10 30 11 um and in talking to chief our ordinance refers back to the state ordinance which allows for it that's what we found in our research we don't have anything prohibiting it so our referral mm -hmm. goes back to the state code which says only consumer grade 1.4 g fireworks at this time are allowed so that's what's allowed we don't prohibit okay them. okay yep. so do people want to is, is the, the then the discussion do we want to prohibit consumer grade fireworks I'm for it. Correct. Right now, yeah. they're only allowed on those 12 or 13 holidays and limited mm -hmm. times. But if you want to prohibit it, you can. Right. Or control your hours. Or control your hours or any of that. I, I after watching what I saw around me and what I could hear from my house regarding fireworks, I don't think anything additional is necessary. But if other people feel strongly then we can continue that conversation. But that's probably something. Go ahead, Council Person. I was just going to say I was out of town for the weekend of the 4th. So I have no opinion on how things went this week, uh, <laughs> this year over the 4th. Other than, of course, I was in Chicago. So almost all the municipalities canceled their fireworks that weekend. Oh, uh, it, was, it was lighter than last year, considerably lighter than last year. Yeah, and I also kind of, fireworks of, you know, classy fireworks have always been illegal in Ohio until very, very recently. And that has never stopped people from setting them off on the fourth weekend. I yeah. know when I used to live down in Clintonville off Pacemont, people would go to the Parker Roses fireworks, and then there was a little park across the street from my house, and people would go there and set off rather old fireworks all the way until Columbus police pulled up an hour, hour and a half after start time. And an officer would walk up the hill and say, everyone go home. And everyone would go, well, I guess that's the end of fireworks and pick up whatever stuff they had left and wander off with it. So I, I guess my point being, we can put that in. I think people are still gonna do it because they have 15 minutes worth of stuff. And but still, that's, police, that's, on our, that's on our enforcement at that point. That I mean, we, can't say, we can't yeah. say, well, we can enforce crack, it, but you know, they're gonna have it anyway. I mean, I, I, I know I'm pushing that there, but you know what I mean? We, yeah. I, I agree with that. It's, like the whole, like, well, we can't do anything about it. So we're not going I mean, to. That's not it's gonna not, just, not help anybody. Hard. Yeah, you know, I agree with Nikki there. That's not. Well, I mean, we can, and it would just require us really sitting down with Chief Belt and saying, hey, you need to schedule extra officers that weekend. and. Yeah. When there's fireworks, get there, give them a five hundred dollar ticket, and say, "No, we're not being lenient. We told you you can't do this. Oh, we don't care. Here's your ticket. Goodbye." Yeah. And you do that for a few years, and people will realize they're serious. Yeah. And is yeah, that, that would be the action that would need to be taken. Other than, you know, if you change the code, I guess that was my point: is that you change the code, but you don't change the the enforcement behavior. The enforcement behavior. The code you know might as well not be there and True. and is and is that the enforcement behavior that we would want right here here i i see you've done this thing here's your hefty fine don't do that thing ever again i i 
I feel like fireworks on uh, it, it, it stings in my mouth, but what, what, there was the phrase from the crappy row row verdict that that came out, you know, deeply held American tradition or whatever, right? There are these holidays that are very much fireworks holidays. And now we're going to come in and say, hi, person on this very much fireworks holiday. Here's your fine for celebrating the holiday the way you like to celebrate the holiday. That is largely an inconvenience for a short period of time. And no, here person yeah. that likes to celebrate the holiday that is damaging to our pollution, you know, that causes pollution, that's damaging to our wildlife, that isn't good for anybody else in the surrounding area, find a way to celebrate that isn't dangerous to everybody around you. How about, hey, person, try to be a little bit more considerate. Uh, I, I mean, the, the, the argument... But that's my personal you know, opinion. Uh, yes, that is your personal opinion. But I think that same argument is, I think that argument is a dangerous argument, right? Because we're all doing things that are dangerous to the environment, right? We all own cars. We all buy goods that have been shipped by truck. We all, right? So, so your argument is, while not invalid, uh, to some extent, um, in, in my opinion, not, not particularly reasonable. Because you, everything, uh, you know, everything can be of, of uh, we, we are all doing things that are bad for the environment. There's opportunity to do reasonable things that are inconsiderate to your neighbor, right? Consideration for your neighbor is not. Um, it we doesn't mean we should just go all out on either. Yeah, we I, that's a, we to me, that's a Manichaean mean. argument. And that's a little, that's like a logical fallacy because what you're saying is it's all or nothing. And that doesn't well, mean yeah. you can't do something a little bit less. Uh, I drive an electric vehicle because I thought that would be better for the environment. It's um, better, but is so, it, is it, does it not, I mean, what's the, what's the environmental cost for the manufacturer of that? But, right? but and, the, but the whole that thing is we're still trying to do a little bit less. It doesn't have a, to be everything. Yeah. That's right. The whole but, point but the, is, right. So did you get a so chance question, to read that article that I sent? I, I did not know. Okay. But well, it really I talks about like the environmental, but also I the, the, the impact on our um, compromised Jay. population. Sorry. She wants cherries. Um, our compromised population um, and the asthma risk, the risk in the environment, the fire risk. We didn't even talk to anybody from Columbus Fire to be able to make that determination. So I think it's it's really easy to be like, it'll be fine. But if Columbus made that determination when talking to a fire chief, so did Westerville. And we didn't do our due diligence. I, I don't think that this is a safe way to proceed without actually doing our homework. Now, but we now, did take the time to stop and say, oh, by the way, if something does happen, it's a resident's responsibility. So if we can take the time to make sure the village is safe, we can take time to do that fully and all the way around is, sure. is what my point. I, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure I understand what you just said. So, Nikki. so I think we're, if, we're, if we're jumping around, if we can bring it back, there are certain things you can do here, such as set the hours for, that, that's a courtesy and convenience issue. You know, it's the nation's birthday. It's still set and I some realize some people on fire within those hours. I, that's I understand I'm that. I'm not saying that that's not going to happen. We'll start with the, with the things you can immediately control. You know, you can set it down like that. And then you can have, you know, you've got plenty of time to say, all right, we realize the state is pretty widespread with all the fireworks you can show up with all the holidays. How do we want to handle that from an hour and day standpoint? You know, what's appropriate? You know, you've, you've got plenty of time to have multiple discussions dedicated to this and quite frankly, to bring in data that you want from, from other sources. So, you know, I would just say, giving it back to uh, President Wolf, that you, you, you can do some things to change things. Yeah. Okay. So I do think that uh, getting Columbus Fire to opine is is of value, right? The um, and this should probably be a discussion that goes to a committee to draft draft legislation to then forward that onto legislative committee. So do we want to take this to legislative? Do we want to take this to safety? Who who wants to take this up to to move it forward? I would love to, but I'm currently a little, maybe after, how much, how much of a time frame do we want for this? Because I can commit mm -hmm. to this probably after October, November, but. We have until we do it, right? I mean, there, there are enforceable laws on the books, which is basically to allow fireworks. Uh, the sooner someone is, is going to put in that effort to, to 
draft a change to be considered by this body is the sooner changes might happen. Right. I do think that it should go to a committee, whether that be legislative or safety. Those are the two that make the most sense to me. But, you know, so that would be the chairs of those would be Councilperson Brueger and I believe Councilperson McNamara. So yes. do either of those committees want to take up drafting legislation regarding fire fireworks? Would Councilperson Brueger be willing to do kind of a, uh, I don't know, I guess a conference committee or collaboration with it? Because I definitely see the point to having it in both. Um, I would just say, let's just choose one to put it under because we know people who are interested in it are going to show up to either one. Right. I mean, we're just not big right. and unwieldy enough to be like, oh, well, these two never see each other and the people on this committee are never at least two thirds of us show up to just about any committee meeting. And quite often all of us show up to committee meetings if there's something of something like this, I wouldn't imagine whether we named it safety or legislation, we'd have five people. I'm gonna just say, let's do it on the legislative meeting on the 28th, since that's a council night anyway, and people have to get down to the building for council anyway. Yeah. And okay. That might be the easiest. If, if everything I'm saying makes sense, I, I can see in some it things committees don't yeah. overlap. So let's all of our committee, committees overlap so much. Whatever the, the title is, doesn't matter. Yeah, the yeah. Only... If, we, if we didn't have, if we didn't have anything coming up, I'd schedule a safety meeting. You know, in a reasonable time frame as well. But yeah, if if legislation is open for that day, that's perfect. All right. So then the only the only thing I would ask is, um, Eric, as our representative to the administration here. Can you see if Columbus Fire has any, I don't know, like a white paper on this or reach out to a chief that we have a relationship with and have sure. them uh, put together their, their thoughts and or considerations regarding this? So, so I sent out a link for that too, by the way. That was from Westerville's Fire Department and they invited the fire chief to speak at their council meeting to justify their... Um, decision to uh, ban all fireworks. So I sent out that link for everybody too, and I already did that research. Yes. There you go. So you've got some of that. And if you would like to have a, a, one of their fire folks, lieutenant, captain, hire, uh, come speak. We can we can ask. Well, yeah. Why don't we Why don't we get through that committee meeting before we before we do any inviting? Understood. All right. Any uh, right, one any last other. Thing. The only other thing that I would want to consider is whether um, what we need to find out, and Eric, maybe this is something you could do is, sorry, um, if, is if our um, cost to have Columbus Fire service us would go up if we did allow fireworks on certain days, because I, you know, costs can go up because of that, I, because we're more of a hazard. So Sure. I, 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 I would just caution that I don't like to put ideas into the charging authorities head about um, you know those things so i would just say because i think I, that's common yeah. practice actually uh, <laughs> no, I, I would be I, we can talk about this on the side but i would be i would i'm just going to tell you that's not I, I don't think that's a good idea for me to personally bring that up to anyone who may go back and say oh yeah by the way we're going to charge extra 10 grand next year that's a great idea you know because i think i think that's a that's something that can easily be justified and and especially when entities are looking for money. So just uh, just urge caution there. I think your your best so on gathering just not do it I would just it. gather data on, you know, I think fire departments are going to fall within a certain view shed uh, and I think that's just something that you keep in mind. They're there for the public safety and anything fire is their bailiwick and they're going to speak to it. So I think, you know, if you've got data great and then if you need to bring someone in Council can ask them all kinds of questions before you get to a decision. There you go. All right. Well, Any a legitimate question? I mean, you know, yeah. and costs. I would, you know, I would urge you. You know, you are privately able to message and and ask those questions. So, I, I would just say again, um, you know, we they they if your fire if your runs go up, right? So if there's, I would look at it from the standpoint of the benchmarks. If your runs are going up, that's a legitimate justification for them to to handle it so you can say do do we have any fires that are occurring for firework usage on those legal days and i think you have to go through a year of legality in some form with the fireworks to get that data right so that's a it's a chicken before the egg type thing but other than that they're going to speak 
from a sudden state of conjecture about it. So my two cents, we're happy to do whatever you need to do, be done to get them over there to talk to you. All right, any, any other old business? Um, I actually wanna bring up something. Oh. Yep. <laughs> so um, I know we had our special planning or a village, uh, sorry, our council meeting about the buildings and stuff like that. Um, I, I was just thinking about some stuff. I know we're about to um, get a bid and hopefully get started construction on the new community building, municipal building. Um, it made me start thinking of um, what's happening with all the stuff that's in the building. Where are we putting all the equipment and all that type of stuff? And are we going to incur extra fees? And and so do we, we need this maintenance building a little faster than slower? Because you know, where are we keeping the the tractors and the and the and those type of things um, while construction is happening? So so, so yeah, if I may, yeah, so. Good questions. Uh, we have obviously talked in-house to some extent about this. I would say a lot of extent over the past few months. We, we clearly need to first get a legitimate bid so then we have a firm construction schedule of when things are going to happen, right? We can't, make, we can't make any plans of where our offices go or bring in any temporary structures or pods or storage until we've got a firm plan and we coordinate that with the construction firm doing the work, right? So that's A number one. So number two, anything to do with the uh, right now conceptual maintenance building, wherever it goes, is going to be, again, in conjunction with the construction firm that we hire because it's in all likelihood going to be a change order, given how much difficulty we have had with getting a bid for a larger building. It's going, it's just, it will be easier to coordinate with a GC already in contract uh, and, and then get some, you know, costs with how that will be constructed and where it'll be. And we'll, it's just one thing at a time, basically is what I'm saying. So we'll, we'll get there. We've had discussions and we've looked at some initial pricing. We'll bring that forward to you once we have someone under contract and once we have a construction uh, schedule. I think my concern is that we're gonna have extra extra money going out for storage, you know, renting space that we didn't budget for uh, that's going to continue to eat away at this funding. We, that is going to be a separate pool of funding. We will talk about all your options uh, when we get to that, right? Because that's, that's operational costs, not necessarily capital construction costs. So there's two different things there. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other old business? <clears throat> any new business other than the motion for the National Night Out, which was already in the packet? Look how quickly Leah got the, Leah got uh, Barb to put that on there so fast it was already on the on the packet. Uh, any other new business? All right, then I move that we adjourn. Have a great weekend. All right. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice Have a good week, one, guys. All.